So, it was 1981, and my brother David, who was 11 and super, super gross, <laughs> had me pinned down in my makeshift bed in the back of my dad's brand new big green van. Yeah. A long line of spit dangled from his mouth toward mine. His disgusting, vomit-inducing, shiny saliva was inches away from my lips. My lips. I flung my head over to the side and let out a high-pitched scream. Mom! My dysfunctional family and I were on our way to Grandma's house in San Diego for Christmas from our farm in Oregon. Our gang included nine-year-old me, the drama queen, mom, the constant peacemaker, dad, the enforcer, punisher, preacher, brother, David, the mean comedian. I mean, fuck, he thought he was so funny. <laughs> he still thinks he is. There was also six-year-old Kathleen, the spy, and three-year-old Michelle, who was super cute and wasn't mean yet. <laughs> but she threw up when Dad drove the windy roads, and that's all we smelled for the rest of the trip. <laughs> we were always spoiled at Grandma's in San Diego, and I loved it. She had the best, most beautiful Christmas tree with a ton of gifts for us kids. We got to see our cousins and aunts and uncles. We ate tons of cookies and candy. And Grandma let me taste her gin when no one was looking. <laughs> but before the cousins, cookies, the candy, and the gin, I had to survive that trip without my brother killing me or me peeing my pants. <laughs> I couldn't hold it in for long those days, you see. That road trip wasn't our first trip to Grandma's in San Diego, but the first in the big green van. Mm -hmm. We kids even made a pact not to fight during that trip. I think David, David probably crossed his fingers because he was a total dick the entire <laughs> trip. The big green van was extra special because the minute my dad saw it in the paper, he somehow knew he'd get it. He created a vision board for this van and even some hands-on prayer was involved at my dad's weekly Bible thumping groups. It was sketched and collaged. He wrote affirmations on cards and tape them all over the house. So he left them there for months, and any time someone came into our home, they could see it. So for me, a nine-year-old shy kid, it was totally embarrassing. <laughs> but he did get his van. It was pretty cool, though, too. It had two four-pointed windows shaped like stars with, with two long benches that ran under the windows. It also came with an eight-track cassette player that Dad filled with Bible study tapes. <laughs> but he also played Elvis, Frank Sinatra, Patsy Cline, and old twangy country music with bad words that he told us never to repeat. Dad laid a board over the benches with a big green mattress for us kids to hang out on during the trip. We three older kids jumped onto the bed and quickly claimed our spots before we even left the farm. David on one side, me on the other, Kathleen kicked it somewhere in the middle, and Michelle just kind of crawled all over us. <laughs> we were still on the highway and hadn't yet begun the long and windy drive over Grants Pass when Michelle threw up for the first time that trip. That's when David grabbed me and took his best aim at my mouth with his stinky spit. I pursed my lips and tried to scream again. 
David, get off your sister. Mom sounded a little nervous. Dad yelled at him in a warning tone. I'm not putting up with you torturing your sisters the entire trip. None of us wanted to make Dad mad because he could get a teeny bit crazy. Dad certainly didn't have much patience with me as a kid because he felt I was overly emotional. Can you believe that? <laughs> if you looked at me wrong, tears streamed down my face. And they still do. <laughs> Daily, David loudly sucked up his fit and rolled around laughing hysterically on the mattress. I swear, my brother was a devil in disguise as a boy. He cheated whenever we played a game. And when I cried to mom, David's cheating. He shouted back, don't believe her, she's lying. Mom always then yelled back at me to stop crying and told me to stop cheating. God, I couldn't win. He loved to torture me. In fact, he shot me in the shoulder with a BB gun and a dare once. I couldn't wait until he grew up and moved out of the house. I crawled into my corner against the back window, grabbed my notebook, and wrote a sad poem about how mean my brother was or unf how unfair the world was or something to that effect. <laughs> and while that was happening, my dad's intensity increased as the traffic worsened. We all got very quiet. Oh no, I had to pee. I've been holding it in since we left the bottom of the pass when Dad had to put snow chains on the tires and I had to wipe my ass with leaves because I forgot the toilet paper. <laughs> I figured it had been an eternity by then. But see, David looked at his Star Wars watch and said it had only been two hours. But I couldn't wait any longer anyway because Pete was about to squeeze right out of my eyes. <laughs> I approached Mom's seat and whispered, I have to pee again. But Dad heard me. He grumbled to Mom, I told you not to give her more water. He turned around and glared at me with eyes that said, you're pushing your luck. Mom sighed, can you hold it until we stop our gas? No, I said. Dad reluctantly pulled over and I quickly hopped out of the van. The thing about peeing on the side of the road is that you have to be sneaky <laughs> so nobody sees you and you have to look out for wild animals while, <laughs> while you so, <laughs> while you find somewhere safe to squat. Oh, and Bringing your toilet paper with you is super important so you don't have to use crunchy leaves down there. <laughs> I finally found a hidden area, but when I went into my squat, I began to lose my balance. Mom! I yelled again as loudly as I could muster. Mom walked over and held me so I wouldn't fall to the ground. I began to grow dark, so we headed back to the car. I told her that David was mean and that my sisters were no help. Mom sighed for reasons I now understand. <laughs> when we returned to the van, Mom pulled out a box of red wine, filled herself a solo cup, and told us we had to sleep right now. <laughs> so sometime later, I was jolted out of my sleep by the van's tires screeching out and then a loud thump not understanding what we heard, we kids looked at each other in terror. And Dad safely stopped the van. He went out to check what happened and quickly returned to grab the shovels under the mattress. He called out for David's help and they walked back to the front of the van. We girls looked over at Mom. She said, Dad ran into a snow embankment, but we'd be fine for the rest of the way because he would drive like a slug from then on. <laughs> and that he did do. I cried while David teased me and my sister, saying he would make me and Kathleen sleep in the snow. 
Kathleen giggled. She thought it was a great idea. Then I had to pee again. Stupid fucking bladder. <laughs> well, David and I, sh well, Dad and David shoveled the snow away. Kathleen and I walked into the dark with a flashlight looking for a good place to squat. We dropped into our stances when I suddenly lost my balance and her little hands were on my back trying to steady me. I did try to be nice to her for the rest of the trip. I swear. Those trips were, go were gross and stinky. There was hardly any air, and we ate countless bologna and cheese sandwiches. But now I realize those were some of the most incredible adventures I would ever have as a kid. There were fights. Arguments, tears, and even a little laughter time to time. But there was always someone there to stand guard when you had to pee on the side of the road. On the side of the road. Excuse me. Today we are a fully functioning, dysfunctional family. Mom wanted me to add that she is glad we're out of the house and the family trips are over <laughs> and the big green van is dead. Put your hands together for another van first timer, Jessica Dearborn. <laughs> <laughs>